I think a sweet level would be King Triton's Palace from The Little Mermaid. <laughs> Thematically, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful place. And if your Black Ops soldier is equipped with a fin instead of legs, you lose the problem of mobility in water. I've thought about this. It's amazing. Right, it's, ama it's, ama it's amazing you're not a game developer. <laughs> Shit. That last question was from Genius. William Lawrence, by the way. This next question is from James. Vanderbeek. Really. No. Ask the guys which other game, aside from COD, would they have liked to work on? God, man, I've been playing uh, God of War uh, 1 and 2, and, uh, you know, this is just a completely personal note, right? And, uh, man, what a fantastic game that is. Just, just uh, the pacing of the mechanics is inspiring, inspiring uh, stuff. And the ball-breaking challenges in that game just fascinate me. So that's a, that's a, that's a completely personal Right. answer to that question. Well, it's a personal question. <coughs> so Todd Bailey wants to know, <clears throat> does Treyarch ever plan on creating a multiplayer experience with zombies where players are somehow in control of the opposing four players with guns <laughs> through map control or controlling the zombies themselves? Todd, if I told you our plans, then you would take credit for them. So I cannot tell you our plans. Got a point. One of the designers on the, on the campaign side, uh, Gavin, Gavin is his name, he's the senior designer, uh, and one of the scripters. Um, very early on in the developments of, in the, oh god, in the development of Black Ops. <laughs> oh, this is going to be good. He had, he had prototyped the ability to run around as the dog. <laughs> so when the dog spawned, you were controlling the dog, and you could actually steer the dog and go and bite people. <laughs> And he put the bark on a button. <laughs> Alright, what's going on here? Oh my god, that would be amazing. <laughs> this is a true story. Gavin, I love you. I'm actually this obviously fully... didn't make it into the game, but yes, this kind of stuff comes up. And I don't know why you're saying obviously. I am fully behind, behind controlling well, what is con the ability to control a dog. <laughs> you were yeah, 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 dude. No, you were no, down no. at ground level and... <laughs> It was just crazy. It was, Unleash the hounds. It was, you know, in production, pre-production, this is the kind of stuff that uh, wacky designers uh, come up. I had this idea. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be the dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, in multiplayer, you got to put the player in control of the, uh, of the player in a gun, and everything else is secondary. You know, kill streaks are secondary. Uh, being the dog is secondary. Driving the RCXD is secondary. Those are all, you know, driving, being the chopper gunner, those are all things that are ancillary that move the experience along but don't necessarily they're not the game is about a soldier and his gun and it's got to maintain that way that's the that's the core of call of duty brett sklar says treyarch guys you have been very successful with map packs in the past uh and sh you sure are going to continue to be successful why not try weapon packs to add more variety to the game that's a great question and one that comes up from time to time um there's a lot of complications with weapon packs when you have console games. How do you, ha in reality, you can't actually put it in the downloadable content. Because the downloadable content isn't, doesn't, everybody doesn't have it. So if I'm playing with you and I have downloadable content in the weapons, right? Okay. How much memory would a, a new weapon take? More than I have. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So there's a, there's a technical limit, of course, in that I can't actually do it. There's the, the game. The game's memory cap is full. Absolutely, on both platforms, 360 and PS3, to the brim, and we go to the brim every single time. So there's there's that problem. But that problem can be mitigated in future games. But it doesn't solve the other side of this thing about how how do you how do you deal with the community and matchmaking? How do you deal with guys who have the map pack, or the, sorry, a weapons pack, guys who don't. It's actually a fairly complex problem, uh, but there's big support even at Treyarch with the uh, Alex Conserva, who is the lead programmer for multiplayer, um, and uh, he loves this idea too. So I think eventually we'll figure out how to get this sorted out. Uh, Sam Steele wants to say, pre-release they were prepared to mess with I don't know how he's... Were they prepared to mess with weapon balance, or was it a spur-of-the-moment decision to actually listen? So, I guess he's saying, were you prepared before launch to, to really uh, treat tuning weapons or balance as, a, as an ongoing process? No, it's a great question, <laughs> Sam. Um, it's got a complex answer. So the short answer is we were absolutely prepared to continue to tune and finesse the game after it was launched. We put a lot of stuff in place that would let us do that. 
Um, and then there's the reality of the game in a post-launch world, the scope of work that it's been to maintain the game, uh, and what it means to actually uh, do it, and do it uh, in a constructive way that doesn't actually uh, deter the game or, or step the game back in any strange way. So, yes, we were absolutely prepared to do it. Yes, we have done it. Yes, we will still do it. Um, and, uh, you know, to be honest with you, um, it's something that's pretty, it's a, it's a pretty tough topic internally. The, the, on, on one hand, uh, some of us want to go in there and just <laughs> do major stuff. Like, go in and, like, touch 15 guns, you know. Right. Do something big, right? Especially a couple, you know, in a month or two from now. And then there's the other camp, and I'm sometimes in this camp. Like I'm thinking, hey, this is a, you know, this is dangerous. We got to go slow. Let's be careful. Let's not make things worse. Every time you touch the game, it's uh, it's actually dangerous, you know, because it, it, you, you you always can introduce new bugs whenever you make any changes to the game, you know. So there's two camps, and uh, I think in practice, um, what'll happen is we'll do what we've been doing so far. As things materialize, as we learn, as we have data, as we get feedback we'll make certain changes and but it'll come slow and we'll do it deliberately <laughs> and safely you know so one more from Andy Moore here he's asking is it possible for Black Ops to have a dedicated server on the 360 Treyarch uh, no that's a question <laughs> um, uh, technically is it possible not not in Call of Duty Black Ops is it technically possible sure I mean the PC game has a dedicated server right okay it's like, it's that was from Mandy man. Moore. That was from Mandy she, Moore, actually. Yeah, she stopped. Uh, she she stopped not having a career, and then. <laughs> right in. So Ben Q wants to know. I'm a games. This is the last question. I'm a games de design student at University oh. of England. What shape is no, the no, industry no. in in terms of employing postgraduates with regard to Treyarch, and if you can comment the industry as a whole? Uh, you know, it's 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 tough to comment. Uh, well, sorry, what was his name? Ben, ben. Q. Hey Ben. So. It's actually really tough to, to answer the question as an industry as a whole. Um, the industry is changing a lot. There's a, there's a, there's a, you know, obviously a, a small number of really large games uh, in general, but there's also all sorts of new opportunities for students, and uh, you know, in, in, in social in social games, you know, the, the, the way that uh, Facebook has brought social gaming. Uh, so there's lots of really new interesting opportunities. Um, as far as Treyarch goes. Uh, you know, some of our, some of the, the 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 hardest working, smartest folks that work on the in the game are uh, former interns. Uh, Jay Mattis, who is one of the gameplay programmers, him and I worked on wager matches a lot. Uh, you know, he he was a guy from Brown University who interned at Treyarch, and then uh, you know we we hired when he graduated, and he's he's only one of many examples of this. So um, you know, if you're if you're if you're talented and bright and smart and hardworking, and you come in, you intern, and you work your butt off, and everybody likes you, and you do good stuff, uh, I'll be frank. Uh, you know, even even having Call of Duty Black Ops does not guarantee that you have piles of really fantastic resumes. So um, you know, yeah, there's great opportunities even at Treyarch, and uh, you know, you can uh, I'm, I'm sure you could look at Treyarch's website or Activision's website to figure out which positions are currently open. And then as we start new games and we reorganize teams and stuff, we, we hire more people. Um, I cannot find enough good designers. Uh, it, it's uh, very challenging to find really talented designers. So please, get your resumes in. As far as uh, the industry on the whole, is, would you say it's easier now? Or was it easier 10 years ago to aspire to be a games developer? Uh, wow, you know, it, it's really tough thinking back 10 years ago what it was like then. Um, I aspired to be a games developer ten years ago, so it was possible. Um, but you know, uh, it's uh, you know I think there's been a lot of a lot of effort around this. You, there's like a, lots of new schools that have come up with game development programs and stuff. We've gotten some designers from from those types of schools. Um, but you know, really, you, you get hired in the games industry because uh, you're exceptionally bright, extremely talented, and hardworking. Um, you know, have great grades and. Uh, and you know, and can demonstrate that you have the ability to execute on your vision and ideas. And that's really what's important to Treyarch when we hire. Is uh, you can have all the great ideas in the world, uh, but if you can't actually make your ideas come to life, then y you know it doesn't actually help you make games. Right. So there's lots of people with great ideas. There's very few people with lots of great ideas who can actually execute on their ideas.